trial. No. 
I have no idea. We, I've never even heard of Gossip Land. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Burita. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Wong. But this was a private matter between Wan and myself. So it was a Fry and Bane matter, or was that Bane and Fry? Reminds me of fishing. But I... I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who admit to dinner. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well. Witness, please testify to the court. About what happened when you discovered the murder had taken place. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. What I saw was, naturally, exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes, sadly. I didn't remember how to touch things at the scene of a crime. I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made. I see. Yeah. I can't do a deep enough voice. My throat is too dry. Hydrate. Okay. I, s <laughs> I still can't. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. She is one cool, lucky customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head on. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman that's easily thrown by things inconsistent with her. So you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over. Understand? It's time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. Hold it! And what was Mr. On Guard doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the nickel samurai during the ceremony. Mr. On Guard did say he was uh, taking a nap. And I guess you could say it could have been taken out of his room. Yes. It could not have been taken out of his room. Yes. Excuse me, Ed? What are you... Objection! Right. I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. You can't make a sensible sentence with a subject. I'll make one. Watch. And you, it's Andrews, removed the strong guard's knife from his room. Subject, verb, object. Wait, did you skip basic grammar? Witness may continue. After that, I went to Wong's room. Hold it! And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Wong has to make an appearance with the other members. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Press further on that? Am I gonna get penalized? Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon. I... You had a certain goal in mind when you started getting close to a perfect. So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim? 
I'm sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at the time. I can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. Maybe we, uh, may we continue now? Witness. What did you see when you got to his room? I was there. And there, it's dead body. I... I was in shock. You were in shock? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Freda. Anyone randomly stumbling on a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her Sure. That mean? Okay. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. I see. What I saw was, naturally, the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. Holy! This is the photo you're referring to, correct? with the knife lodged in his chest. Uh... And the guitar case was like this too? Yes, it was open and empty, of course. And then, what did you do next, witness? I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. It does sound... Uh, it doesn't sound like there's any glaring... That, uh, that last one. Uh, the only way to make her is to on the offensive and not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some very strong, decisive evidence. Find something. I just have to, for my sake. mistake at the cr ah. God. I'm convinced that as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know was what this mistake was. Actually, so would I. I I'm sorry, it, it's just it's kind of embarrassing. When I when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower bottle. Flower bonds. Are you talking about the one in the crime scene photo? This mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser. When I bumped into it, my elbow fell onto the guitar. But why did you withhold such important piece of information? I'm sorry. I, I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, 
simply assume the pause was just another process. It looks like yet another fact has come to me. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. onto the guitar case. Uh, is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what's so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. <laughs> That's very true. Furthermore, there's one other strange thing about this case. <laughs> what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene. Though. The remains of the balls are scattered on the floor. What is wrong with that? The guitar case was open when it boss fell. Glass shards would be inside, not outside the case. Ah. Objection! What is your point? That the case was closed at the time when the boss was knocked over? Is that all? Objection! No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the boss, she didn't touch anything else. Yes, that's right. She did imply that she didn't touch the guitar case. Oh, she didn't implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. Objection! But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found in the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. That may very well be, <laughs> however... Ugh, wait. The empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case, doesn't it? It seems that there is no deeper need to the case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more detail about the guitar case? Yeah. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. Oh, for Maya's sake. Alright. I'll follow along now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember too clearly, because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the gates before I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal. Maybe the case was empty up. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. It looks like this really wasn't a very This wastefulness is such a By now, it's almost... Hello. Anyway, 
I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Using any way to change the topic. Convenient escape for me. Is any way to change the topic for time? Am I a weak man? Fuck. Trying to pull up the Twitch lap on my my screen distance, but it keeps breaking. I have to re reload the app. Just push to that. No, because if I do, it does um makes this popping noise. I have like a. Why is she holding an illustration of a show? <laughs> I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. Hold it! Uh, during your testimony just now, did you remember those events clearly in your mind? Well, you see. Are you sure you're the one who opened the guitar case? She's... She's waiting for someone to tell her if she should answer. Oh, is everyone... Was everyone's chat busted? My chat was busted, too. Which has been having like a really weird like issues with tw chat recently. Sounds like her dependent side is taking over. Well, Miss Andrews. It yes, it was me. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. Open the guitar case then? Yes, well, maybe. Why did you open the guitar case? Huh? Mr. Karita's dead body was right there in front of you, wasn't it? I would think that the first thing you would do is call for help, but not open a guitar case. As the witness has said multiple times, when she found the dead body, to know if the bright red guitar was alright or not. I thought maybe the criminal took it. Why would she keep it? But getting back on topic. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after was found at the studio. These trials would be over in half the time if you would just pay attention. Yes, pay more attention, Mr. Wright. Sorry. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Hold it! Is that because you were shocked and dazed at discovering the victim's body? Yeah, pay more attention. <laughs> Yes, that's probably it. <laughs> I'm not gonna get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk is with new evidence. I guess I should give it a try. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, Phoenix. We can't afford to let up on her now. I wasn't planning on letting up, but... She's at her weakest now, so now this is our chance. Yeah. If we have a weapon to hit her with... I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the waiting to be found. No! You stole the guitar? Damn. <laughs> it is a cool 
cool guitar. Do I have a photo of it? Is that something I have to I can present? Oh, wait, hold on. Um, I I to open the guitar. Okay. No, it's not the Nickel Samurai. Do I have a photo of the Jammin' Ninja? Don't. Damn it. I wanted to show you guys how cool this guitar looked. Oh well. Okay, I'm sure I'll see a photo of it again at some point. Oh, did you get a photo of it? Hold on. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Thank you. <laughs> there is no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. Ah! Ah! What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony. So, of course, I dress up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems like the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Nothing strange about that! <laughs> it's definitely strange. You were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove that I was not wearing gloves at the time? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do, I do, I do. Because... Fingerprints are on this. I have your proof right here. It's wine glass. You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah! Whoa! 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 Eleven people have showed up. A lot of them are probably watching ads right now. So I should wait like 30 seconds and then say hello. <laughs> Hi everyone. Thank you, Gafafawiz. You're the best. <laughs> Hi, 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 hi. Um, I am doing some very bad voice acting for Ace Attorney right now. This is Ace Attorney 2. Um, <laughs> it's Ace Attorney 2, Episode 4, which is the final case of Episode 4. Uh, 2-2. Two, two. So we're halfway through this case right now. Yo, I love Snake Rissa. It's so good. Got yeah, blessed. <laughs> okay. We continue reading this. <laughs> and oh yeah, hello to everyone who who finally stopped watching ads. Welcome. <laughs> um Ah. Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice. Wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? That you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ah. Oh, nice. I hope they fix the ads thing. Uh, order, order, order. Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. My voice acting's whatever. I wish I could do- I wish I had more of a range of voices. Um, what- what do you mean? I believe the guitar case plays a very important role. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, guitar. Right, right, guitar was at the studio. Phoenix, drop all your presumptions. 
What was in the guitar case? Uh, what, what, what was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar. Wait, that's not right either. What? I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the case... Objection! Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic, and lull us all into this misguided... Objection! No. Your Honor, please recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. Which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. Objection! If you are so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten us as to why that guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Uh, can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. Bright red guitar not being the only thing? Y you don't mean to suggest that a bright black guitar was- <laughs> So, you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I don't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? Uh... On a second. <laughs> Evil version of Von Karma. <laughs> Edward is my friend, though! Uh, Phoenix is right- Ah! Edward is and Phoenix Raid are, like, pretty good friends. They won't admit it to each other yet. <laughs> um, okay. It's inside the camera. Okay. is what is in that picture, Your Honor. This picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai, the hero's very own costume. What? what? Uh, Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right. Are you saying that the case, eh, the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? I, I refuse to accept your do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And, in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You, you mean this photo. Order, order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. So the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Objection! What? Wait one second, Your Honor. Nickel Samurai's costume would have been 
that on guards. Why would something of the defendant be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case, of all places. True. That is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was this nickel samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Uh, yes. That is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had brought the spare to the ceremony on purpose. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Kurita, was the Jammin' Ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai's spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? And therein lies the sticking point. What, what are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner man uh, monologue? Huh? N no, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Yes, I can. Think carefully before you answer. And then, answer with gusto. I believe in you. Alright. This is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was... Is this the only thing I have about the press conference? I think it is, right? I'm pretty sure it's because of the press conference. Take that! What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ongard himself said that he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, it can only mean one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Carita himself. Victim. Yes. The spare Nickel Samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Carita was going to hold the press conference as the Nickel Samurai. That's pretty fucking rude. He was gonna show- he was gonna dress up as the Nickel Samurai and hold a conference? But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something that I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Carita, posing as the Nickel Samurai, is going to speak about Matt, uh, Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that's what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. <laughs> Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him. 
That was also me. You. Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with them. That's what he thought anyway. He was going to ruin him. It looked like somehow Juan had his hands on his secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? And do you know what the secret of Mr. On Guards is, Mr. Andrews? Miss and Miss Andrews? <laughs> That's something only Juan knew. I I don't know what it was. Uh, I see. I I've probably been coming off as quite suspicious to everyone. But that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. Protect Mr. On Guard. And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was harmed. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what, and he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife, but I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. This does account for everything. Well... I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rat. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I am ready. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine, Mr. Wright. It's like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. The moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ugh. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. You didn't teach that to us in school. At least, not what I remember. May I continue now? <laughs> yeah, she was lying not this whole time. And everyone does that to me. Everyone fucking lies in court. Not supposed to lie in court. Everyone lies in court. It makes my job as Phoenix Wright really hard. Matt had to kill one no matter what. So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. Ongard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Uh, anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. Miss Andrews, please correct your testimony if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? I 
know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Hold it. Has Mr. On Guard done something to hurt you or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Frito with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. On Guard, yet you still helped out. The person on trial right now is Mr. Ungar, right? What the witness was thinking? Helping the victim with his plan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I hold on, I gotta see what message that says. <laughs> Welcome to court! <laughs> Snake Rissa! What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with his plan, is none of our concern. In any case, this means the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. But, but didn't you testify earlier that Mr. Ungard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you can cover for Mr. On Guard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him from the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said. Man, I really hope those emotes don't disappear at the end of June. I'm gonna be so upset. I love those emotes so much. They're so good. <laughs> hmm. I keep trying. Okay, did I already read this? <laughs> but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom. <laughs> However, the judge is glaring straight at Mia. He's glaring at you, smart guy. Really? Because it sounded a little wishy-washy to me. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know that this you should know this by now. But you'll need strong to say some evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm gonna pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. Okay. We actually get through. Okay, one. Last one. But what you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Objection! Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed things about Mr. Ungard at any time. No, he's not. Why then? Would she wait until there was a large audience before it's the same reason why Mr. Karina planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. On Guard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards that ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright wax philosophical power hour? And please stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. It was the same dialogue. Wishy-washy. Got it. Okay. Hold it. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. What about the button? Button. It's clear from the crime scene the victim in and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the thriller ripped the button from the jam in ninja's costume. Talking about this button. 
correct? That button was found in the plates of Matsukama, isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh, looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. Uh, anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. An icy stare, yes. <laughs> Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this testimony, uh, add this information to your testimony. Okay. Hold it. And how do you know that? I should have read that. Oops. When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly. Or so I heard. I've heard that before, too. But why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that, just because I'm prepared and you are not. Ugh. And I thought I had her in this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where and what? Um... autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Str strangulation? The knife stabbed to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off the costume. When? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly, which means... It's impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ah. That's right, Miss Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body. Shit. Oh, fuck, I didn't get to read that. What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve at all? We now know that this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this button from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, didn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? camera has shifted. No, maybe not. Okay. Try to see how far up I have before my cat ears get cut off, but that's good. To pin the crime on on guard. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On guard. There is no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. On Guard was set up by the real killer, of course. And, and the real murderer is? Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally, I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard...
charge down yet. Not until the very end. Real killer. First new plan to frame his strong guard is... Sorry. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you. You are Mr. Karita's killer. <laughs> what? Why are you using Pokemon references on me? <laughs> order, order, order. Mr. Bright. This is a very great matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. How preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me! I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. Then, uh, what? What about the button that was found in Matsumakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the, was the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. On Guard was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Makama. The person who could have put this button into a strong guard's comma is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is you, yet again, Miss Andrews. I, I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was such, just such a costume inside the guitar case? only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is... You! Miss Adrian Andrews. Uh, no, I... I... Objection. I really need water. <laughs> eh. Um... I'm gonna finish... I need to finish... I'm gonna finish this part. But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And... Oh my god, thank you. Amazing, thank you so much. Ugh, <laughs> oh, so thirsty. It's harder than normal to do the judge's voice today. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know why. I hope I'm not getting sick. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Yeah, that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah! And to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe that this is the nickel sam- uh, that this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? But please, stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, got her this time. Miss Andrews? I... I, I, I refuse. I, I refuse to testify. What is that? There's a law? It says that I can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. Well, yes. You are 
absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self uh, self incrimination by allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can lead to damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. On Guard's room. Adrian Andrews. Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, uh, Alright. <laughs> Von Karma's voice for like two seconds. Okay. That's it. That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things looked bad. We did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there is still one thing that you haven't done. Something I haven't done? Heh <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? It is so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definite proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Miss Green. Well, I could, but I'd be super rude for presenting that evidence. Um... Miss Andrews, you- did you want to kill Mr. Corita? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, do you not think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There is nothing to prove way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No, oh, she's taking that def definite uh, defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. This Adrian Andrews has refused to testify. And the defense's theory that she is an actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definite proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there is only one thing the court can do. And that is to declare a recess. Recess. I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial. T tomorrow No, 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 no. No, no, no. We don't have it tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial. Please continue the trial. Are you sweating? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... That's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict... Oh, was that... Is that supposed to be Phoenix's voice? I'm... Oh, whatever. Okay. If I don't get the verdict, then my, uh... It's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... It's not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, what, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination, however, the topic of conversation for something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Y yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. <gasps> Ooh. You found the victim's dead body. You poured yourself a glass of juice. Y yes and 
I can't help but think about how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Where you speak, I want you to... I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again. As to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edward today, but I can't get a good Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. Court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. I'm just getting a piece of chocolate from this chocolate bar I put in front of myself before I started streaming. I didn't eat any of it, and it's just been sitting here the entire time, and it looks really good. I'm... Sorry, it has like this complicated-ass packaging here. So I love peanut butter chocolate, like, so much. Okay. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Ms. Andrews, if you please. That glass of juice. I really didn't pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And on. He was sitting slumped over entirely. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead just didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower balls over. So you poured that glass of juice for them. Why didn't you say so in your early testimony? I didn't think I needed to Phoenix, please be careful here. I can't find anything wrong with this testimony. There's nothing I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. That glass of juice. I didn't really pour it myself. But there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there is a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, Wright, be quiet and listen. Precisely, I couldn't have said it better myself. Ugh. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. So, it was a mess? Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Karina? Objection! I understand your frustrations at not being able to prove your theory. However, before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. And then, what did you see next, witness? And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking at Slumped over? Yes, he was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me or did that right there sound a little odd? When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Then what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix. 
And that he felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see, so you didn't think he was dead at all. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. Hold it! You thought he fainted? I thought he was asleep at first, but then the room was in such a messy state. I thought that maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when you went to pour the glass of juice. Yes, he always had a hard time waking up. So Juan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. I see. And after that, what happened next? When I realized that he was dead, that's why I knocked the flower vase over. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides, and Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance yet to kill the prostitution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? It's Andrews. Will you tell us the truth this time? <sighs> okay. Okay, give me a second. It's probably a different item I have to present. Hold on. Crime scene photo. Objection! What is the knife that I was about to talk about? Should have worked as presenting evidence, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> so honestly... So you honestly didn't think that he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Giant fucking knife sticking out of his chest? Ah! What, what is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There is a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Krita's chest! Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought him here that, nah, that here was a dead man. Uh, um, that's, uh, well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted. And then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. The point is... Miss Andrews, your testimony just now was all one giant lie. Ah. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. No! Looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. Defendant Miss Ma Mr. Matt on guard is not guilty, after all. That... that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some... It wasn't me! It wasn't me, I tell you! It was Matt! I swear it! He's the one who killed Juan! And you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so is that you might end up incriminating yourself. It's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt on guard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated.
prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak of an absolute to really Still fucking lying over here. The absolute What are you? Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head. But as long as you protect yourself through your silence, that guard will go free, and in his place, you will become the guilty party. Th that's... the lie! I, I don't believe you. What? I... I was told if I spoke, if I spoke then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What? What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I... I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. That on guard will be acquitted. And Miss Andrews undialing the words right now and is clinging on to them. The, then what should we do? This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. Miss Andrews has to be the guilty, right? All we have to do now is, is get our not guilty. Someone, help me! Mr. Wright. Y yes your honor? Court cannot continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? But what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. Thinking about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else who can be except the woman crying over there. Right? Come on. What will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? commend you for joining Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. Y you're wrong. What a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't be this, however. But what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S stop Mr. Edgeworth this witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. The what? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop! Please stop! 
matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Ah! This is... That's... That's the second part of the suicide room. The attempted suicide room. What will you do now, witness? You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her human nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you, if people find out... If people find out, I... I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is no, no concern to me. Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still-breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk. Please, help me. Nothing matters anymore. My crime. I just have to do a thing. Send a message. Okay. Okay. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why, that's why I ended up in a nickel samurai costume. Stab the body with a knife, but why would you do that? No. <laughs> the knife! <laughs> Isn't it obvious to pay blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man. What do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with me. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for him. And this. This is her crime. What? How is this possible? I mean, isn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real- Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-exam- When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted, honest. Hold it! But you could tell from the state the room was in, that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say he did not know he was dead? He... He had a scarf tied around his neck. Um... But that scarf is a part of the Jammin' Ninja's costume, so... Um... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up. Um, and went to pour the juice. When I realized he was dead, that's when I formulated my plan. Hold it! What was this plan you had? 
right away that the murderer was mad. I knew because he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point in the world. So Matt did his did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should first forge some evidence of his crime on Matt. To the forge pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. Holy! That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at the dinner had fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Holy! So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip off one of the buttons that you planted in Mr. Alberto Kama. Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smooth, do they? Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the room, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lana. Also, a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. And that's Miss Old Bag for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. And that's why. That's when I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Holy! You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studio. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is this secret? That, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, you went back to Mr. Ongard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's account? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it in. Then I snuck out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word, what does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt on guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. But wait, your honor! The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. Cross-examination of the witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But, but... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Ms. Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today.
Well, I guess Maya's dead. Fuck. Today's- today's trial. It's over. I didn't win an acquittal. I guess. Would you mind if I asked you something? What is it? Oh, what is it? Where are you leaving today? I wondered if I might look at- The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room that day. That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not, but it's still a strange card if you ask me. But as far as clues to this case, uh, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth. Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me this whole time. I, I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen Edgeworth so emotional before. That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? To be continued! That's what it means. Save your progress. 100% yes. Yes. Okay. Next time I stream this game will be on Thursday night. No, wait. Sorry. Wednesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern. Yeah! Yeah, um, okay, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll be back on tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern with Bloodborne. And then I don't remember what I'm playing tomorrow night at 11, but it's not this, because I need to take one day break in between it, because it kills my throat every time I do voice acting. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna throw you guys all over to Great Newton's channel, because he's streaming something really good right now, too. So, yeah. <laughs>